on the prequel to the 15th episode. We're reviewing Black Panther and previewing The Curious Case of Benjamin Button. Hello and welcome back to the prequel episode. The 15th episode of this film is lit. Podcasts where we review movies that are based on books. Decide... Is the book really better than the movie? But this is a prequel episode, so on this one, normally we review a movie that we've seen recently or something, and then we talk about some uh, fun facts and that sort of thing about the movie, and then movie that we'll be doing next week, which in this case is The Curious Case of Benjamin Button. We didn't do it on purpose, but it's Venture February. <laughs> fun fact number one, we found out after we said we were going to be doing Curious Case of Benjamin Button, I googled it and was like, oh... Well, looky there. This is also directed by David Fincher. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's uh, all Fincher all February. That was not a, a plan. It just happened that way. But first, you get to decide what kind of king you are going to be. Don't freeze. I never freeze. Katie, what'd you think of Black Panther? I really liked it. Me I it too. Was super cool. The end. <laughs> like, like if somebody asked me, what would you say that a movie needs to have to be really, really cool? I yeah. would probably list just about everything <laughs> that was in Black Panther. For real, it's it's a wild movie, and it it, it was even more. It was even. Um, like more unique and interesting than I even and I already thought it would be, but mm-hmm. I it even went places um with some story elements that I really wasn't expecting and kind of and kind of uh, merged a lot of interesting genres in a way that I wasn't expecting. Uh that was super fun. Because mm-hmm. that can be a mess. You can do that and it can be a mess where your movie doesn't seem like it knows what it wants to do or what it wants to be. But the way uh, the they did it and Ryan Coogler pulled it off in this film, merging literally like obviously a superhero movie but like with a spy movie and like a uh (laughs) like a a um fantasy war epic yeah like and and a couple other like things it was very interesting and i really wasn't expecting it where you for part of the movie i'm like oh we're just doing a spy movie now and then it was like oh wait nope now it's when we're doing a completely different now we're doing like a political drama movie oh wait nope now we're doing an all-out like yeah fantasy style war battle movie i what wow it just (laughs) i was it was so many things but it all worked for me like it never felt out of place or weird or like yeah uh, whiplashy or anything it all fit within the universe of the film in a way that felt very natural and felt really fun no yeah all of the different kind of cogs of this film fit together really seamlessly yeah um and it certainly never feels stale no that's yeah it definitely everything that it takes inspiration from it does in its own way and puts its own twist on to where it's not just like there's scenes where it's like it feels a lot like a james bond movie but it's not it doesn't just feel like a james bond movie (laughs) like it feels clearly (laughs) like some elements of it inspired by to some extent you know like getting cool gadgets and then going on a secret suave mission to a casino Mm -hmm. and that's not really spoilers is like very james bond film or you know spy drama or spy thriller um which you don't really get in a lot of i'm trying to think of another marvel movie that's really done anything like that and i can't really think (laughs) Um. of anything um so you know that's a very unique thing within the universe of marvel unless i'm missing something Mm -hmm. um and to do it the way they did but then they take that kind of inspiration and then they they black pantherize it and make it this (laughs) new interesting thing uh where it uh i don't want to say it um goes a step above its inspired inspired medium but it definitely it just takes it and does says that's cool. We're gonna do it our way, and it's gonna be real sweet and badass. Yeah. And they did it, and it did that with a lot of things, while also doing its own thing a lot of throughout most of the film. Um, 
we may get into a few spoilers. I don't really want to talk too much about spoilers. This movie just came out. Although, apparently, according to the box office, everybody's already <laughs> seen it. Because it made, in four days, like $218 yeah. million. Dollars. Like, crazy good. It's like the fifth biggest box, box office opening office. of all yeah. time or something like that. Uh, and second only to the Avengers in terms of uh, Marvel movies um, for opening weekend. But uh, the things, yeah. So the, uh, the, the, all of the elements that it pulls in, and, and it's just like... A f- it's like two hours and probably a little over two hours, but it, it, it flies by. You're never bored. Um, mm-hmm. It The action is uh, all interesting and fun and varied throughout the film to where you get sometimes where Black Panther's in a suit, sometimes where he's not, sometimes where they're fighting people with guns, sometimes where it's people fighting with swords. You, so you kind of mm-hmm. cover a lot of bases in that regard. Um my own, one of my only negatives, and I've thought a lot about this to see if I could come up with any negatives, and this is a little one, was the first fight scene. And I felt this at the time watching the movie. The first fight scene on the waterfall mm-hmm. felt a little off. Like, it didn't flow great to me. Okay. And it felt a little clunky uh, and shot a little strange or maybe edited a little. Like, mm-hmm. something about the way it cut and the way the, it, was, it was shot didn't work a ton for me which was weird because all the rest of the fight scenes did Mm -hmm. and even the second fight scene at the waterfall not with no spoilers felt much better than the first one something about the first one felt like i don't know it just felt weird like maybe they shot it really early on and they still hadn't quite gotten his feel for that sort of yeah because this is first i mean ryan coogler's directed some really big movies and most famously he directed creed which also has a lot of action and it's a boxing Mm -hmm. movie but it's still a different type of Right, I mean, I I didn't see that one, but that's more of like a drama. It's more of a drama, of, right? and it's a boxing film. Um, I haven't seen it either, but yeah, it's yeah, it's it's like it's like Rocky. It's I mean, yeah. it's based on it's not based on it's set in the Rocky universe. Uh, it's about Apollo Creed's son. Um, but it's, I think to me that seems like it's so. So I don't know. I'm just wondering if it took them. Maybe they shot that first waterfall scene early, mm-hmm. and they kind of got their feet under them in terms. I'm just purely speculating here because it was the, one of the only things that I noticed, and I've heard other people echo it since then. Mm-hmm. And I have vividly remember in the theater being like, "This feels," mm. but that was like one of the only real criticisms that I probably have of the whole movie, honestly. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, but it's, so that was just on the action. But apart from that, all the rest of it was great. It has one of my favorite sequences in any Marvel movie, and it, it is the casino sequence. Um, it's a one shot in there that is amazing, and the music that when it kicks in is fantastic. You like grabbed my leg, and you were like, "Yeah," and I was like, "Yep, <laughs> I'm on board." Um, and that, yeah, that was awesome. Visually, it's super stunning. Oh, God. Yeah. It's super stunning. Uh, so vivid. Um, and they, they really use the setting to uh, the fullest of its possibilities in terms mm-hmm. of color and design and yeah. vibrance. Visual interest all the way around. Yeah. And it's probably the most seamless, and this kind of ties into that world building that I've seen in a Marvel movie. Mm-hmm. Because it has to, for one, it has to build a whole world. Right. Whereas a lot of the Marvel movies are just set in, you know, New York or, mm-hmm. you know, kind of modern day America or or not even modern day America, like World War Two or, you know, mm-hmm. um, in pretty normal worlds where we, we, are, we already, they don't have to build it because we're already on board. We get everything that's going on. This takes place in a completely, di- well, a lot of it takes place in Wakanda, a completely foreign to most moviegoers. Yeah, uh, world of this weird, crazy, technologically advanced world that's also very steeped in tradition and uh, um, sort of a traditional, like tribal mm-hmm. uh, infrastructure and um, even like garb and that sort of thing, but melds it with the super advanced monorails and and you know technology and stuff, and it does it in a way that feels effortless. Yes. Which I thought was one of the movie's, like, highest yes. achievements. Yes. Because it could be real easy for that to not make any sense or for us to be struggling to keep up with yeah. where we are, what's going on, what is any way, and have it feel like a slog. And it doesn't. It They do it without you even realizing it. And then you're just on board, at least I was, mm-hmm. and you're like, 
Yeah, this is awesome. And I mean, because like a quarter, not even like halfway through the movie, all I could think about was they they need to make a TV show that's just set <laughs> in Wakanda yeah. about like because with all the different tribes and the political mm-hmm. intrigue within the tribe, I was like, I want, and it's it's trite at this point to say you want a Game of Thrones or whatever. I mean, but. That type of... Yeah, like a political intrigue, kind of. With some action, yeah. with some, you know... It would, it would be really interesting. Be super interesting. And it would be fun to watch, and yeah. it would be fun to write. Yeah, that's what I mean, because you could do kind of whatever you want with it. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm sure there's lots you could draw from from the comics and that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. I, I, mean, I have no idea, but I'm assuming there would be. Uh, and because there's so many vibrant, interesting characters within... And yeah. now you probably have to do it, like, pre... Infinity War because I have a feeling that's going to change and even this movie where it ends changes a lot of Mm -hmm. where things will be Mm -hmm. so it might be hard to do a show within just Wakanda like post the Infinity Wars movies but you could do it pre or whatever when uh, to what I can't remember T'Challa's dad whatever his name is was still king Mm -hmm. or something like that yeah I'd be down for that because that would make actually make a lot of sense too because they were still very secluded and there was a lot of like Mm -hmm. seemed like there was some inner turmoil between groups and, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah, the yeah. Jabari's being the outcast and that sort of thing. So that would be super fascinating to me. I, I was like, I want that show. And then after that, my next thought was, okay, <clears throat> now I just want a movie about uh, Michonne. Oh, yeah. I <laughs> <laughs> can't remember her name in the film. I didn't even realize it was her yeah. until I, I knew I knew her. Yes, I did the same thing. But she looks so different well, without her We've dreadlocks. only ever seen her with dreads, yeah. and it's yeah. like, so it's, she goes from dreads to bald, and it's such a striking difference that it's like, you're, it's that thing where you almost have, like, face amnesia, where you're like, what do I know <laughs> you from? Yeah, the whole movie, I was like, I know, and then as soon as you said that afterwards, yeah. I felt like an idiot. Yeah, I was I, like, duh. I just clicked, I, after we got out of the movie, I went through IMDb, and I was like, who is that? And I clicked, I was like, fucking Michonne. <laughs> well, I mean, we also stopped watching. If we had still been yeah, watching yeah. Walking Dead, we might have, you know, probably, yeah. actually, I almost guarantee we would have recognized her. It's just been two years since we last watched an episode of Walking Dead or something like that. So... Um, but yeah, because uh, her, and I'll, I'll let you kind of take over here, but her character was super interesting and re- well realized, and I think that's true of every female character in this film. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Talk about the ladies. <laughs> because this movie had such amazing female representation. Yeah. Like, a majority of the characters were women. Yeah. Honestly, the majority. Yeah. yeah. Of um, the main characters, at yeah. least. Yeah. Um, like we had warriors, mm-hmm. we had scientists, yep. we had a badass queen character, spy, spy. It was amazing. Yeah, no, it was real cool. Yeah, and that was the moment that it was uh, in that casino sequence when it kicks in. Um, that it was uh, stuff the not that Black Panther was doing, but that uh, what is I'm gonna have to look this up. That uh, Michonne's character was doing mm-hmm. um, that really got got me got the blood flowing, got me amped up. <laughs> well, because that like tribal chanting kicks in, and I've mm-hmm. heard people complain about the. I say I've heard. I've scrolled through Twitter. I haven't watched any reviews, but I scrolled through Twitter. Twitter, and I saw some people complaining about they wished that the 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 score was more um, heavily hip hop and mm-hmm. and and less like dialed back tribal music. Like they, I guess they just thought it was they would it was gonna uh-huh. lean because it was like probably like seventy five percent like stripped down like kind of tribal yeah. like yeah. orchestral and that sort of thing and like twenty five percent hip hop really just that main like what, I guess it maybe it's the Black Panther theme I don't know mm-hmm. that kicks in like every mm-hmm. now and then throughout the movie it's kind of really the only hip hop throughout it I don't know that was just one yeah, of the I things I heard for me it was a good mix I thought so too. Um, but I, I really, I like that kind of tribal yeah. sound. Well, yeah, because that moment in the casino when that song kicked in and she started kicking ass, it reminded me of the, exactly how I felt in <laughs> an equally and oppositely terrible film, uh, Batman or Superman, Dawn of Justice, when <laughs> Wonder Woman shows up and her oh, theme song yeah. kicks in. Yeah. It reminded me of that. And now maybe that theme in this movie is... The uh, general's yeah. theme. I don't was, know. I'd have to look it up. But it was the best part of that garbage movie. Yeah, but it re- it gave me a similar feeling because it's like that repetitive sort of tribal mm-hmm. like yeah song or music, and it but it fits so well with somebody just kicking ass. That was fantastic. Um, 
one of the other things that I thought was the most incredible about this film, and it's been said to death on the internet by a million people already, but legitimately the best Marvel movie villain up there with Loki Mm -hmm. in terms of motivation, caring about them, thinking they're interesting. Yeah. Um, Because a lot of Marvel villains are very disposable. We're not dropping any hot takes here it's you know <laughs> um and yeah i think they tend to be yeah i mean it's just in general they're just not particularly interesting most yeah. of them some of them have interesting elements and you know maybe they if they'd been done more done ahead like we talked about in thor ragnarok i thought uh, uh kate blanchett was that one yeah. yeah yeah her her character hella had a had a chance to be really interesting she did a really good job with it but she wasn't in it that much mm-hmm. i mean she was kind of but like we had to spend a lot of time on you know, with Thor mm-hmm. and, and Hulk right. on, on whatchamacallit. Yeah. That we, it just felt like she didn't want to give as much time to kind of explore. Um, well, and I think that's kind of an unfortunate side effect of, like, the universe and, like, the story that yeah. Marvel is building. Because they're building up towards, obviously, Infinity War and, yeah. like, this big culmination. Yeah. And they have the main villain for that. Yeah. Thanos has just been sitting on a planet right. forever. And, you know, with... A couple of exceptions, like Loki, um, and then I guess the, the fucking gold people from the end of Guardians of the yeah. Galaxy 2. Yeah. Um, you know, with a couple of those, like, kind of side player yeah. exceptions. Well, yeah, you couldn't have, they, they couldn't have a whole... Yeah, the, I mean, they're already going to have a huge cast of heroes. They can't have a huge cast of villains, too. Yeah. So most of those single movie villains have end up being a little or... disposable. Yeah. But I think um, with this one, they managed to avoid making him feel disposable. No, because he's super... Um sympathetic mm-hmm. at least i thought fo- i thought so uh it it was probably I, I, we talked i said this after the movie i think it might be the first time maybe in any movie ever but definitely in a marvel movie i would venture to guess any movie ever where yeah i'm gonna say spoilers real quick i'm gonna cut that first part out i'm gonna say spoilers right here skip ahead 15 30 seconds because i don't want to do a lot of spoilers for this movie uh 15 30 or let's say 30 seconds from now and we'll be back to non-spoilers ready here it comes unless you've seen the movie then listen up this is the first maybe movie ever if definitely first marvel movie where um the villain of the film dying made me emotional and made me made me tear up the scene the final scene uh with him and uh, T'Challa on the cliff legitimately got to me and I was not expecting it, but it was because I, I found the reasons for, um, Eric Killmonger's actions. So sympathetic Mm -hmm. for the most part that it, and, and, and Michael B. Jordan did such a good job with the character that that moment really got to me in a way that I don't, like I said, I definitely know other Marvel villains, and very few other just villains in movies, period, or mm-hmm. TV for that matter. Um, so yeah, okay, unspoilers again. <laughs> but so villains were great. Uh, he was really good. Uh, Andy Circus is awesome. Yeah, again, I didn't know that was actually Andy Circus because you never see him <laughs> no. in the flesh. It's always CG Circus. Um, but no, he and he and. You would might have recognized him if he looked the same as he did when he was in Lord of the Rings, because he was a much scrawnier, uh, less gray, less bearded fellow back then, and his his his, uh, his visage has transformed so much in the intervening years that he didn't look anything like. Wait, what do you mean in Lord of the Rings? He was Gollum in Lord. No, of the but Rings. I, but I mean, you, I wouldn't be surprised if you saw an interview with him or something from back in the no. day, and then you just you you and you, you didn't realize who it was. Yeah. But he looks so different now that you also still wouldn't realize. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, I see what you're saying. It's just like he yeah. didn't look like Gollum. No, no, no. I meant. <laughs> sorry, I meant the actor at the time. Okay. Looked. Yeah, yeah. He he had no beard. He had dark black hair. He was much scrawnier, uh, from mm-hmm. my recollection. So he didn't. But anyways, so yeah, yeah Andy Circus. You said he bulked up quite it, a bit. I think at least thing. I don't know if he did it for this role, but he he definitely from the last time I saw him in the part mm-hmm. in person, he was not kind of built like he was in this movie um but he's 
um, he's a lot of fun. Oh, yeah, he's phenomenal. He's a lot of fun, and there's uh, a great scene with him. And I was <laughs> talked about this. I I don't know how they avoided doing this. There's a great scene between him and Martin Freeman in a room together. It's in the trailer. You see yeah. him and Martin Freeman sitting in a room talking to each other. And uh, I don't know how they avoided not dropping any Easter egg or slight nod or just a little throwaway line to the fact that Gollum and Bilbo Baggins yeah. were sitting in a room. <laughs> I know, man, they could have at least had Andy Serkis sarcastically call him precious. Yeah, say that's precious. Or something. <laughs> just, uh, just anything. And now I get why they didn't do it. Yeah. Again, I, I, the one thing I said at the time was, you know, if it had been a Deadpool movie or something that these two characters were in, 100% you would have seen it, I feel like. <laughs> Or, or maybe even like a Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, you know, Guardians something. of the Galaxy, I could see that. Or even the last um, Thor, yeah. Ragnarok. But this was a little, it was a little more serious yeah. than those ones. Yeah, it was a little more serious, and they didn't want to break the immersion because yeah. he was such a uh, an intense character. Right, and the, this was not one for breaking the fourth no, wall. No, and I, yeah, yeah, no, I agree. So I, I, I know why they didn't do it, but I just. I imagine there's deleted scenes. There's like yeah. 20 minutes of deleted scenes of them just sitting there of him doing the Gollum voice. <laughs> there's like, gotta be. And like, you know, like, like he had to have just sprung it on Martin Freeman on like the first take of the first, you know what I mean? Like just yeah. came out with it. And then everybody on set started laughing. Look and, forward to that in the blooper yeah, reel. It's gotta be in there. I can't imagine it's not, but who knows? Maybe. Who knows? I, I, maybe they don't look so fondly back on their time recording uh, the <laughs> Hobbit films. So, um, uh, but yeah, no, he was he was amazing. Uh, what else about the movie? Um, what I thought was interesting is being the movie that tied in, that is the lead in for Infinity War. Mm-hmm. There's not a single other Avenger in this movie. Yeah, there's not a single other reference to any other. Yeah, things happening. I mean, really. I mean, obviously they they touch on um, the events of. Um, right, which, right. Which... Sorry. At the beginning, there's flashbacks and allusions to what happened to his father. Yeah. At the United Nations and that sort of th- like Is that so civil war. Yeah, that was civil okay. war. I um, remember. Yeah, there. That that's true. They do go backwards. I guess my yeah. point is, there's no like contemporary like, you know, Nick Fury doesn't show up at the well, right. You know, or, or or Cap doesn't show it at the end, or no, and none of that happens. Um, there's not even any. There's no Infinity Stone discussion Mm-mm. that I or no. There's nothing really to tie it in at all, other than we know that what. Other than like I said, the flashbacks and we know what universe it takes right. place in, and in the final post credit scene, kind of to some extent, um, definitely has repercussions on the universe at large. But yeah, yeah, it uh, I thought, which I just thought was interesting, considering like I said, it's the movie before. Yeah, Infinity no, that War. is that is an interesting choice. Um, but I, something to me that was interesting about this movie was that it it felt to me almost like another era of Marvel, even yeah, um, like kind of getting on a roll because like our Marvel movies, we started out and they were doing something really different yeah. than other superhero movies, and they got a little tired yeah there. For a while, um, and then we had like Guardians of the Galaxy, yeah. and they kind of started doing new stuff again. Yeah, and um, then that kind of waned a little bit. Not everybody loved yeah. Guardians of the Galaxy two, which I really did. But um, and we had a similar kind of feel with Thor Ragnarok. Yeah. Um, but then this one, and yeah, because I would say Ant Man also kind of fits in that. Yeah. Category oh no, with, like it Guardians of the Galaxy and that. kind of irreverent. Yeah, irreverent comedy, yeah. more comedy driven. Yeah. yeah. Um. But this one felt like a new thing yeah. to me. It did. Um, and it also, that last, I don't know, I don't know if this qualifies as spoilers or not. Oh, the final scene? But that, um, the post-credit the post scene? The post-credit yeah. scene. We'll say maybe, maybe spoilers maybe if you spoilers, want. Maybe spoilers, potentially. Fast forward a few seconds. Yeah. Um, the post-credit scene gave me like flashbacks to the first Iron Man. Remember at the end when he says, I am Iron Man? Oh, no. I felt like 
It's been so long since I've seen that movie. Yeah. But that was a totally different thing then. Yeah. Remember, right? And like, oh, right, where he comes out done. to the press. Yeah, he right, comes yeah, out yeah. to the press. There's a press yeah. conference yeah. and he just says, yeah. I am Iron Man. You're right. This is kind of like the Iron Man. Yeah, it's kind of like the well, Iron Man it reveal. Is, and it is because I'm going to go out on a limb and say in Infinity War, lots of people are going to die. Black Panther's not going to be one of them. Mm-hmm. Especially with how much fucking money this movie just made. Oh, yeah. They're not killing him off. <laughs> Uh, lots of people are going to die. Iron Man's going to die. Probably Captain America's probably going to die. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. or, uh, fucking Hulk. You know, they're, they're going to kill off a bunch of people. And yeah. it's all going to be the old guard. Yeah. Mostly, you know, we might lose a couple of, you know, but um, mostly the old guard is probably going to be people that die. And he definitely could see him being part of the second, because this is the end of the, whatever they call it, the fir- the. This generation yeah, I don't of even of, know what it's it's got a name, but well, whatever comic it's, book names. I don't know. Yeah, it's got, well, it's it's just this um sort of generation of yeah. Marvel films. Yeah. Um, and this is going to be the end of it, and I think he's going to be one of the through lines. Spider Man's going to be one of the through mm-hmm. lines, and you know, a couple other people here mm-hmm. and there are going to be the through lines of those films or the future films. Uh, and so yeah, you're right. It is kind of like, which is it's fun because you know I've. A lot of people on the internet saying, well, it's just another Marvel movie. I've seen some reviews saying, you know, I'm just tired of Marvel. I'm like, I don't know what movie you watch. I mean, it is, yeah. sure, it is a Marvel, like, it is still feel like a Marvel movie. It feels like a superhero movie because it's a fucking superhero movie. <laughs> but, I mean, it felt about as different as something like Guardians of the Galaxy did. Yeah, no, for sure. Which, again, it still feels like that thing, but it feels so different, and, and in a completely different way than Guardians of the Galaxy was mm-hmm. for me. Um, like I said, venturing into this spy kind of thing and venturing off into this other, like, very interesting, like, yeah, uh, tr- uh, tribal p- politics. Yeah, like, and, it's like and, sci-fi tribal, yeah. Yeah, a sci-fi tribal, like, uh, yeah, politics and warfare and, like, mm-hmm. very interesting thing and it, uh, it all that kind of stuff. Very different. Um, I th- yeah, and that, that was the thing that I found most interesting about it. Uh, along with, and, and we haven't really touched on any of it, and... It's my favorite hot take on the internet for middle-aged white guys to go, I don't understand what's the big deal about this movie. <laughs> you know, when I, when I see all the tweets from people of color and so not saying like, woo, cool. And they're like, well, okay, whatever. It's like, yeah. So the political implications of the film, which it doesn't shy away from remotely. No, not at all. I mean, it's the main plot of the movie is, <laughs> I don't know if this is spoilers, but the main plot line, through line of the movie that motivates the villain versus our hero is a disagreement in how to handle um the oppression that uh that people of color all over the world have faced it's yeah. basically the through line of this film it's it, they're not shying away from the the political implications in the movie uh and and the date of time which i wouldn't expect ryan coogler to do that because it's kind of mm-hmm. a thing he's about um and especially, like you said, the final. I mean, and, there, and there's so like there's some subtle political uh, commentary. There's some not so subtle political commentary, <laughs> and it's that that would be very very spoilery. But we got a big kick out of it in the movie theater. It's in the post credit scene. Yeah, I punched um, your leg. Yeah, you punched my leg. I don't think anybody that listens to us is uh, has any un- under any um, misconceptions about which way we lean politically. So you'll, I think you'll know what you're kind of getting at the end of the film, but. <laughs> Uh, without spoiling it um but yeah it just it it really did it really was just as uh interesting and fun and and different that as i expected it and wanted it to be and then and then some in ways that i really wasn't expecting that blew me away which i don't know if i can offer higher praise than that uh and, and, and again when it all boils down to it the same thing i said for justice league Bare minimum, superhero movies have to be fun. Yeah. 100% nailed it. Oh, so much fun. So much fun. And then you tack on top of that, that it's, oh, tells a really interesting story with really compelling villains that are very sympathetic and that it's very emotional. And that, oh, also it touches on really important uh, uh, social commentary and doesn't shy away from it and at a time where it's very much needed. And, oh, it also happens to be this huge, uh, you know, success that... Uh, you know, movie studios finally starting to realize, hey, well, look, Get Out made all this money. Uh, Black Panther made all this money. Uh, I had another one. 
can't remember. Uh, you know, we're a starring cast of mainly people of color. Yeah. Look, making like, shit tons of money. Maybe we can start telling different stories. Yeah, maybe we could tell different <laughs> stories. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> hey, guess what? As two white people, we really like this movie and we'll ha- totally we'll, we'll go see these movies with people of color in them. We, that's cool. Like, <laughs> well, I don't have to have my superheroes be white. It's totally fine. Um, and and I think the box office made it clear to Disney. I mean, yeah. I think Disney already fucking oh, like, knew that. Disney, Disney doesn't do anything yeah. unless it's a sure bet. Yeah. I would say Disney already knew that because it's all fucking idiots on the internet have been screaming yeah. about, about how Disney and their fucking diversity casting for the last five years. But yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah. That, I don't know. I don't really have anything else to say about it other than A+. Plus. Great A. Well, I will also give Black Panther an A plus. Sweet. Um, a plus plus. And if nothing else, go see it for Lupita Nyong'o's face. <laughs> she. We had this discussion. We got out of the movie. We we're like, is not fair that there are people that beautiful in the world. She's so symmetrical. It's I'm like, is she a real person? Straight up ridiculous. That scene in the casino when she's wearing that green and black dress I was like this people should not be allowed <laughs> to be this handsome I don't uh, it's not fair <laughs> it's not fair she, yeah, yeah she's stunning she's very stunning everyone is very stunning yeah it's true everybody in the movie yeah. is just gorgeous it's just like jeez and they're all really good actors they didn't just cast yeah. them because they were gorgeous they all crush it <laughs> everybody in the film is incredible breakout star we didn't even talk about her his sister is oh she's like my new favorite dynamite <laughs> yeah the actress playing his sister is incredible and she was really good in the movie and uh she probably had the biggest laugh line in the movie with the what are those line but yeah and that won't mean anything unless you've seen the film so <laughs> i mean yeah i guess if you know the meme but even still you don't really know what's going on um <laughs> so yeah it uh yeah, she was fantastic. I, I'd never seen her in anything, and I was like, she is incredible. She's going to be huge. Yeah. So look out for her. Don't know her name, but she plays Black Panther's sister. All right, let's move on. That was a long discussion. We got to get into a little preview of Benjamin Button, the curious case of Benjamin Button. Promise me he has a place. You never know who's coming for you. Back for a moment, take your mind off back. <laughs> what in God's name? Affirmity's not of a newborn, but of a man well in his 80s on his way to the grave. He's dying? Of old age. Oh, God in heaven, he looks just like my ex husband. My name is Benjamin. Benjamin Button. Well, luckily, I have almost no fun facts. Cool, for I this. have very few. <laughs> so kick it off, let's do it. All right. Um, so this is a short story. That I haven't read yet. I'm going to do that later. It's not very long, so I'm not worried about it. Yeah. Um, but it is. Uh, it explores the relationship between fathers and sons, apparently. So I read on the internet. Yeah. Um, it's also a an example of magical realism, not necessarily fantasy. Um, so his condition is... An accepted outlandish phenomenon in an otherwise recognizable world. So, it's considered magical realism. Okay. Um, uh, Fitzgerald was allegedly inspired to write it um, by a remark by a one Mr. Mark Twain. Hmm. Um, It is a pity that the best part of life comes at the beginning and the worst part at the end. It was attributed to Mark Twain, and supposedly Fitzgerald was inspired by that to write this story. Also, Fitzgerald, maybe not the humblest guy, he allegedly called this the funniest story ever written. About his own story. Wow. Wow. It's funny because the vibe I get from the, like the movie trailer I've seen doesn't strike me as particularly hilarious. But <laughs> I could be wrong. <laughs> Who knows? We'll find out. But apparently, he thought it was the funniest story ever. There you go. So that's all I have. <laughs> that's all you got. Okay. <laughs> Dang it! I was hoping you were going to go a little longer because I needed to Google something. Um. All right. Well, I I also only have a few things. 
The first one is, as we discussed, this is a David Fincher film, uh, 2008. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, I completely had no idea it was a David Fincher film. So the screenplay mm-hmm. is uh, was written by Eric Roth, adapted by Eric Roth. Mm-hmm. So if you remember from the last episode when we said that we were doing this movie, I made a joke about how it... Uh, one, I thought it was a coincidence that it was a David Fincher film. We had just done a David Fincher film. We didn't even realize. We really did, literally just done three David Fincher films. Yeah. Um, two of them were on purpose, though. So. Uh, and I made a joke about how I thought it looked boring. I saw mm-hmm. the trailer for this movie, and I thought it looked boring. Now, to be fair, I was uh, 19 yeah. when I saw the trailer <laughs> for this movie. But still, I thought it looked boring. But then I made a joke about I also thought the same thing about Forrest Gump. Mm-hmm. And I really love that movie. It's great. It's a lot of fun, uh, but also very heartwarming. It's a good movie. Turns out Eric Roth also wrote Forrest Gump. Hmm. So apparently he just writes <laughs> these kind of movies, these sort of like lifetime, like yeah. a look at a life, the ups and downs. <laughs> the Anyways, I thought that was interesting. Yeah. Eric Roth uh, adapted the screenplay. So we're going to play a game. Oh, no. You ready? Mm. This movie was almost adapted like four other times okay. before this adaptation. Okay. Each time, or sorry, it was almost adapted three other times. Each time it had a director and a main and a, and a star connected to it uh-huh. in like pre production, and then it fell through. I'm going to list off four pairings of a director and an actor. Three of them are real. Oh, God. And one of them is fake <laughs> that I made up. Okay. And you have to guess which one's the fake. Okay. So three of these were actual director and uh, actor combos set to direct a film and star as the. Titular mm-hmm. Benjamin Button. All right. Frank Oz and Martin Short. Okay. The first pairing. Quentin Tarantino oh. and Bruce Willis. Okay. It's the second pairing. Steven Spielberg and Tom Cruise. Mm-hmm. The third pairing. Final one. Ron Howard and John Travolta. Okay. So three of those were really um. almost set to make this film. Together. Okay, One of them um, wasn't. the Frank Oz Martin Short. Um, I'm just gonna ignore that one. Okay. Um, Quentin Tarantino Bruce Willis seems like the most unlikely, <laughs> which makes me think it's probably <laughs> real. Um, Spielberg, Tom Hanks, Tom Cruise. Tom, sorry, Tom Cruise. Yeah. Um, to me, Tom Hanks makes more sense. Yeah, it does. Um. Well, Spielberg and Ron Howard are both pretty obvious directors. Yeah, they make sense. I guess. And yeah. then Tom Cruise and um, John Travolta, was John Travolta the one are not as obvious leading men. Yeah. I'm going to guess that the fake combo is Spielberg and Cruise. Should have went with your gut. Because, and I did that on purpose, because I knew you would think it was the most outlandish, <laughs> because it is, and I thought you might think it was real, therefore, which is exactly what happened. Quentin Tarantino and Bruce Willis you were not ever attached. Up. What? You made that one up? Yeah. Now I want that movie, <laughs> I made that one up. That would be a wild one. <laughs> but so, for uh, um, the first choice to direct was Frank Oz, uh, mm-hmm. most famously. I don't know, I guess, what, he, what did he direct? Did he direct Labyrinth? Um, I mean, he's most famously I mean, he like the voice of Yoda and a million other yeah, things. Yeah, I don't know but... if he directed it, but he was, I mean, he was definitely attached yeah. to. Um, well, I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, pretty much anything Henson did yeah. he was a part of. But, um, so, yeah, Frank Oz uh, and Martin Short were attached, which Martin mm-hmm. Short playing this, I, I don't know because I haven't seen the film yet, but uh, I just, Martin Short and Brad Pitt aren't people to me that you Right. Put, do you know who Martin Short is? Yeah. Yeah, the comedian from like SNL and stuff. Yeah. The, Wacky dude, yeah. He's just like kind of short and homely looking, yeah. and, and weird looking, and then it's Brad Pitt plays I mean, this character. He could do, he could he could do, do with an old, old, the old man. yeah. Although if Frank Oz was directing it, I would have to hope he would use an old man puppet. Puppet. <laughs> <laughs> good point. It's a good point. Uh, so that was like in the eighties uh, when that was going to potentially be made. Uh, mm-hmm. In the in nineteen ninety one, it was optioned by Spielberg, Spielberg, okay. with Tom Cruise attached, uh, but he ended up leaving the project to mm-hmm. direct. Jurassic Park and Schindler's okay, List. So okay. I think we lucked out in the end on that I, one. I think um, Tom Cruise in 1991, that makes sense, I yeah, think. Yeah, that's back yeah. Uh, before he went weird. And it's also, um, yeah. Okay. Kind of, uh, let's see, Top Gun was like 
mid eighties or late eighties. Yeah. So it's kind of right around that the peak, yeah, yeah, peak yeah. Tom Cruise ness, but also before he won an Oscar because <laughs> I think he won the Oscar for Jerry Maguire in like ninety six or something like that. Okay, and then finally, uh, Ron Howard adapted it, uh, or he had the screenplay, and then yeah, potentially John Travolta, which mm. I don't know what year this was. I couldn't find that, but. That would have been weird. Yeah, but it would have worked. I can see why John Travolta coming off of a like Saturday Night Fever kind of yeah. in that time frame, maybe ballparkish. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. He's got such a face. Yeah, John he does Travolta have such a face. Does. I agree. <laughs> All right. Uh, so the score was written by French composer Alexandre Desplat. Hey. Yeah, who just won a Golden Globe for Shape of Water and is nominated for an Oscar and will probably win that too. So, uh, speaking of Oscars, this film was nominated for 10 of them. Wow. Did it no, win sorry. Any? Nominated for 13 of them. Mm-hmm. Won three. Nice. Didn't win the other 10. Uh, the One of the other 10. The ones it won was uh, art direction, mm-hmm. uh, makeup, and visual mm-hmm. effects because of all the right, that aging makes sense. and the... Yeah. That sort of thing. And I'm sure there's lots of, like, compositing and stuff. Kind of like what they did, like, with Lord of the Rings for the yeah. Hobbits when he's, like, a little old man or whatever. Yeah. I don't know anything about the story, but that would be, I guess, lots of stuff like that. Um, but it was nominated for Best Picture, but didn't win. Hmm. And I think also for Best Adapted Screenplay and probably a bunch of other stuff. What like did that. it lose to? Best Picture. <sighs> this is 2008. 2008. Oh, it lost to No Country for Old oh, Men. Oh, yeah, it's a really good movie. That's also an adaptation, isn't it? Pretty sure. Uh, yeah, I think so. Also a title that could work for this story. Yeah. There you go. Perfect. <laughs> uh, apparently it took five hours each day to do the makeup oh, on God. Brad Pitt when he was old man makeup. Mm. Uh, the thought of all those prosthetics makes me itch. Yeah, yeah. This is uh, David Fincher's first and potentially only PG-13 rated film. Hmm. I don't know if he's done any since then. Mm-hmm. Uh, Gone Girl obviously wasn't. <laughs> I'm trying to remember if there was one right after this. Because this was 2008, Gone Girl was 2014. There was probably one, at least one in between there, but I'm mm-hmm. not sure what it would have been. Um, I was blanking on it. The two intervening films were The Social Network, which was also rated PG-13, and The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, which was rated R. Finally, uh, obviously David Fincher directed Brad Pitt in Fight Club. Right. Also Seven. Uh, which I don't think that's an adaptation. I think that's an uh, original screenplay, but I could be wrong. I don't think so, yeah. Look. Um, just do all of David Fincher's movies. He does tend to do adaptations, apparently. Uh-huh. Uh, he must be a fan of literature. Uh, but there's a nod to Fight Club in this movie. Really? Look out for it if you're going to rewatch it. We'll have to keep up. Look out for it. Uh, Benjamin's father asks about... Benjamin's father, at some point in the movie, asks about the house on Paper Street. Oh. That's just a little subtle thing to... Yeah. Fight Club, so... Paper Street Soap Company. There you go. That's all I got about The Curious Case of Benjamin Button. Uh, It's free on Amazon Prime if you're interested in watching it, so you can be all freshed up. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, and read the short story because it's, yeah, it's, it's pretty short. Yeah, it's You could probably read the short story quicker than watching the movie. You probably could, Because the honestly. movie's like two hours and like 20 minutes. Yeah, the short story's not that long, um, and I am I found more than one like PDF of it Because it's probably like public so, domain or something yeah. like that, yeah. So you can yeah, go read it and watch the movie. There you go. Be all caught up with us for the next episode. Ready for it, because we're doing it. One week from today, The Curious Case of Benjamin Button. Until that time. If you like our show, you could leave us a rating and a review on iTunes. That would be phenomenal. We're also on Stitcher and Google Play now. Just added that recently. Ooh, we're fan, on Google Play now. Yeah, somebody requested uh, a fan of Good, Bad, or Bad, Bad requested, "Hey, can you get on Google Play?" And I was like, "I'll see." And it took like five minutes. So <laughs> we're on Google Play now. You can search awesome. for us on there. This film is lit. Yeah, ratings and reviews on all those platforms though really help. Also, you can check us out on Facebook, like we always say. This film is lit. Just search for that. You see, this is where we post other, you know, a, other sundry items, uh, a, a, accompanying pictures and or, mm. you know, sometimes there's a drawing in the book or whatever, that kind of stuff we post on Facebook. We also have a Twitter at this film is lit. The same thing. That's kind of like the Facebook similar type stuff. Yeah. Whenever yeah. there's like sort of articles or accompanying any info. Uh, Any extra material. Yeah. Uh, we also have a subreddit reddit.com slash r slash this film is lit where we post uh, a post for each of the episodes where you can comment discuss the movies we also have our full pretty much list uh, of future movies 
just our giant, not even future movies, just our compendium our, of our all the giant potential. dumping ground. Yeah, our giant potential episodes. Potential episode list, which, yeah, it's uh, over 100 movies by now. Yeah. And books. Um, um, if you want to see that and then see if there's something you have to recommend that's not on there, shout that out at us. We're also on Goodreads. Yes. This film is lit on Goodreads, um, where we are keeping a running tally of whether we score the book or the movie as better there you go and so far it's heavily in the book's favor yes as it will probably stay until i start getting my chance to read the books and then give it to the movie <laughs> out of spite <laughs> which maybe actually not no maybe not i i'm joking i because honestly most of the time i do prefer the book adaptation yeah. uh like, like most of the harry potter movies and although on second viewing we'll see when we get to those this summer but yeah, in general, I do tend to prefer the books when I've read them. Uh, the, speaking of coming up soon, we'll be doing Ready Player One. Yes. Uh, which comes out in March. So that'll be the first one where I'll be reading it, you'll be watching it, and then we'll be discussing it. But until then, guys, and gals, and non-binary folk, and all others, keep reading books, keep watching movies, and uh, go do both for Curious Case of Benjamin Button. We're about to talk about it.